there is not an absence of drama here, Andrew Weissman, um, inviting everyone to read the document in full, um, making clear that the men and women behind the classified information that was compromised are American patriots who risked their lives to protect U.S. national security, and, and that is what is at stake. Um, important that he called out his partners in this investigation, the men and women of the FBI, and called for a speedy trial, both in the public interest and the right of the accused. And I would add, and that there are one set of laws in this country. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, this was in terms of a model. In, I, I viewed this as a sort of Merrick Garland, Robert Mueller model, not a sort of Archibald Cox model. If you're sort of, you know, just to date myself, meaning this is definitely sort of a less is more. I'm hitting just key, the facts, key points that I want to make. I, I, you singled them out um, that he wanted to hit, but he wasn't going to belabor it. This was definitely, you know, read the indictment um, and then we're going to be heard in court. Um, the, the one thing I would have um, liked to hear um, if, if uh, if I were doing this, and I, you know, it's hard to, from the outside, is just uh, more about why this indictment is following the rule of law. Not just that there's a strong case, but that so many other people have been charged for um, less than this. In other words, mm -hmm. this is one where if you hadn't brought this, um, it would have been completely um, antithetical to what the Department of Justice did. And that's something that I think I think lots of people are going to need to sort of fill in um, because it's clear that um, a different calculus was made that's legitimate, which is, you know what, we're going to try our case mm -hmm. in court and, you know, Donald Trump is going to do what Donald Trump does and we're going to do what we do and count on the fact that jurors are going to have an oath that they take and count on them to do the right thing. And Nicole, I mean, America just met Jack Smith. Right. And it was a very brief meeting. <laughs> and that is how he rolls. It was crisp. It was about the facts in the four corners of the case. But the unstated implication was, yes, go read it and sure, follow the trial and the defendants have rights and they are presumed innocent. It was a model of fairness mm -hmm. without any reference. I don't even think, and I was taking notes, I don't think, correct me if you guys heard differently, I heard a single sentence that made reference to the precedent, the history-making aspect, that in ways that will be remembered, good, bad, or in between, we have to follow the facts. He will forever be in the history books, and if the case goes left or he loses it, it'll be in history books for difference. I heard none of that in, in a town where lawyers, present company, even myself sometimes included, can sound loud, long, self-important. It was just the facts. It was Elliot Ness, and I think that's so striking because he's speaking through his actions, so he has very little else to add. Well, and Rachel, it's completely in line with the first point you made. The simplicity of the indictment was very much echoed by the simplicity of the words chosen by special counsel Jack Smith. Yeah, and I would just I would just say one thing about the structure of his remarks that um, I completely agree with both Ari and Andrew and you in, in characterizing this as a very straightforward, crisp, you know, we, we've heard from people who've worked with Jack Smith before that he's not a man who likes to play with his food. He just gets stuff done <laughs> straight ahead. And we definitely saw that. But the, but, the, but the way this went is he, he said what he had done, told people to read the indictment. He said this is a rule of law issue and everybody's, you know, uh, uh, has the, uh, this will be tried in court and everybody's guilty until, uh, sorry, innocent until proven guilty. You know, he sort of finished. And then he did one other thing at the end, which he did not have to do. He added this pointed codicil to the end of his remarks in which he praised personnel from the FBI who have participated in this investigation.